to Soho Trent and the world. This is Six Towns Radio. Kampstag, that was with Sirens, and I have the immense pleasure of having some of the guys here right now. How are we, guys? Very good, thank you. How are thank you? Thank you. I'm good. Uh, Dan, how does it feel, firstly, to be back in the Six Towns studio? Uh, very, very strange, but nice. Uh, yeah, we used to, me, me and Chris from uh, Kampstag used to present a show on a Monday night. I think it's Six Towns Rising, I think it was called. Um, yeah, and it's very nice to be back actually. <laughs> See the place. Seat as well. I know back in my in the very same seat I used to be. <laughs> still can't I, work the computers. I it? didn't even know this until about a week ago when I was chatting to Chris, mm. and and he said that he used to do it. And um, the fact that the the title Six Sounds Rising and then Radicals Rising. Yeah. And I didn't even know. And yeah. I, was, well, I, it's I feel, just, I feel, it's I feel just like a I look. I look like I'm just copying off you now, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. I don't think. Yeah, you uh, only asked for ten percent, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll, work, we'll work something out. I, I, I can cope with ten percent. <laughs> I can say that. Um, I was just saying that I, I worked out that it was over a year ago that we had the first play of Camp Stag on Radicals Rising. Mm. Um, that twelve months has been massive for you guys, though. How uh, yeah, it has. It's been it's been pretty crazy mm. and and not not entirely planned. <laughs> I don't think. I think probably when yeah when when you guys played us out first that was that was a good while ago, and at that point it was kind of it wasn't it wasn't sort of a pet project, but it was something that we were kind of putting the feelers out and just seeing how things going, get into a room and write some tunes together, and then like you say, the last twelve months have kind of gone a bit crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's, well, it, it's not as, as though it's the actual the last twelve months. It's sort of the last couple of months in, in particular. Yeah, it's really yeah. only yeah. been since end of last year. When yeah, we put probably. The EP out. Yeah, probably September, October last year, and then uh, certain different people picked up on the EP and have picked up on Sirens since then. And Sirens kind of had some kind of resurgence, even though it was released ages. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and then it's 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 been. The, the start of this year particularly has been yeah. absolutely crazy it's been non-stop which is, which is ace um, but yeah kind of crazy at the same time yeah, well, I I was very surprised um, I was watching the Olympics last year mm. um, and one of the cyclists I'm, I'm a big cyclist fan so I was watching right, that right. and and sirens came on in the background of one of the interviews yeah and yeah, I was like yeah. I, I'm sure I know this track and then, <laughs> and then it clicked it was like how that's immense so how as a fan it feels it feels incredible so how does it actually feel being your song that's on there um i, I think i think humbling was the mm. word we came up with because it's something that I, we're we're all we're all big sports fans and uh, you know we're it, was, all, it was one of the paralympic cyclists yeah yeah wasn't that it? was it yeah and to see someone that's to see the, the, the kind of people that get involved in that and the kind of people that that push through all these different things to, to get to the pinnacle where they are being soundtracked by us <laughs> <laughs> for numpties from Stoke <laughs> is uh, yeah yeah it was really really nice very very special for us one of the highlights so far I think mm. um, one of many one of many highlights so far yeah, well I was at the the Manchester gig a few weeks ago all right uh, yeah how yeah Adam Green is, is an immense artist is, mm. it, is it nice to be put on a stage with that kind of artist uh, yeah I think so I think it's a uh, Again, again, it's something humbling, and it's at the time because because we, we're busy and and we're busy getting everything together and making sure the gig runs well. You don't think about it. I think mm. it's probably, usually for me, it's it's only when you kind of look back on it. Yeah, when, yeah. especially of late when we've looked back at the gigs that we've played and you think, wow, oh, we played with yeah, yeah, like the 1975 and Dry the River, and you look back at all these bands that we've mm. been given gig support, and you think, wow, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, with the nineties. Yeah, like, so at, at the time, you just kind of do it and you set up and you play and you don't yeah, think about yeah. it. And then it's only when you look back at it. It's uh, yeah, all for, like the nineties. Seventy five was supporting Muse, I think, later this year, and we we were playing with them in a little venue in Birmingham, <laughs> sort of like three four months ago. Mm. So yeah. yeah. With, with the the Dry the River gig, humbling, I, as you say, is the perfect way because mm. you were first on for the Dry the River gig, yeah, yeah. but it was still a packed out crowd and mm. they're, all, they're all stood there watching you intently. It, it is very humbling. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you definitely. expecting that? Are you like, hoping that continues as you grow? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But I think at the same time as well, is I think it's important for us to to, to kind of keep your feet on the ground a little bit because obviously things have really taken off for us. But at the same time. I think doing those kind of shows and being first on and being supports and, and it not just being about you all mm. the time, I think it's really important. It's always been important for us because we've been in bands for a long time. And we, I think we've, we've both probably played in bands, or all of us have played in bands where we, we've been first on and the headline band 
knows they're the headline band and has got very little time for you. I'm not going to name any names, but <laughs> um, and so I think it's really important for us to sort of to, to stay to, to keep our feet on the ground for the time being and keep doing those kind of shows. But they're really great, and it's it's always nice and stoke as well because. You get it's nice to see a these bands coming through like seeing Dry the River in, in, in Stoke and, and all these different bands that we get to play with. But secondly, um, yeah, it's just nice that we get into the gigs for free as much as anything <laughs> get, to, get to watch these bands for nothing. Uh, but yeah, we get to play to, to it's always a different audience, which is nice. It's not it's not always the same hundred people at the front. There's always different people, so it, it gets us fans as well. So yeah, I think we'll keep doing that as long as we can. Mm. Yeah, because at the Ruby Lounge, I noticed obviously you're going out of town, but you've still got the, the crowd are very responsive to you. They, they really enjoyed your set. Yeah, you, usually yeah. you'll get crowds that just sort of chat amongst themselves mm. or mm. sit texting or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, which can obviously on the stage and you're seeing that that could be quite annoying. But mm. on, at the Ruby Lounge, there was nothing. I didn't see any of that. But no, uh, uh, yeah, it's it's really nice, isn't it, when we get that? Because we've had that kind of, like, with the Ruby Lounge show, I think there was probably yourself and, and two or three other people that we actually knew who weren't just Adam Green fans. Mm. Um, and so the fact that people pay attention and just don't go to the bar or face the other way or and that people still applaud at the end of the tracks is really positive for us. Yeah. Uh, it just makes us, makes us feel that we're doing things right, obviously. Yeah, uh, but... I was really gutted because I did hear the, the doorman and the, the girl taking tickets in the club we were talking about Macaulay Culkin being there and mm. if it was rumour, if it was true. They confirmed it was true, so I was sort of on the lookout for him. <laughs> well. Gutted that I never saw him, mm. but I did see, I don't know if, you actually, if you've seen it yourselves before, the, the Chris Wilson dad, dad dance. It's uh, it was incredible. We've we've discussed <laughs> Chris Wilson dad dance. Rich Rich has discussed the Chris Wilson dad dance at length. I don't think you're a fan. Are you? I don't think any none of us are fans. No, we don't. None of us he are has, fans. He has are toned it down. Yeah, to yeah. Fair. I don't know if you were. What gig was it? It's, was it the Brown Jug show? Dad. Yeah, the Brown Jug show was so it reached its zenith. <laughs> and, and for a couple, of, we were we were playing in Birmingham. We played with the nine seventy five the next day. Um, and I think it was, it was on, in the van on the way to the Birmingham show we kind of I think we approached the subject <laughs> that we, we love him very very much and Chris we need to talk yeah but well, it was we, less about the dance and more about the shirt yeah yeah it was the shirt he was wearing as much as the dancing that he was doing um, but yeah he's toned the dancing down a little bit now I think he's just he, he, you know Chris and um, I think it's one of the it's one of the real plus points of having him in the band, apart from him being a great bass player, obviously. Of course. But he's just such a big personality, and I think with us, a bit like an excited spaniel. He is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like having a very, very excited puppy in the band. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but when we're sort of when we we're arguing about songs and and we're sort of getting stressed about things, he just sort of bounds in and does a little dad dance and just <laughs> makes it all okay. So it's just it's just great to have him in the band for that reason alone. It, it's the little swag, I, I, you can't really explain it on air, it's the little swagger that he does and he does the little, sh the, the feet shuffle. <laughs> See, the, what worries me is we've not actually seen it, because we're always on stage and kind of saying, <laughs> right, none of us have seen it, I think we're going to have to film a rehearsal, aren't we? And just watch it back to see what it's actually yeah. like. It's, it's almost embarrassing to watch, I'll say oh, that. Good. <laughs> it's good to, know, good to know that we're embarrassing. But at the same time, he's got this beautiful little smile on his face that says, like, I'm so I'm so involved with this music, I'm going to yeah. do a dance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do a, a terrible little dance. <laughs> well, as long as he's enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so with the single, it's, it's not released actually for uh, another month or so. No, no, it's the 20th. 27th of May. And you've got a couple of gigs lined up around that. Yeah, we've got, um, we're doing, we were doing Fat Cats on the 26th of May, and that's all kind of up in the air, so it's, it's uh, that's been sorted out as we speak, and then, um, yeah, we're, we're doing Manchester, uh, London on the 29th of May, and then Manchester on the 30th. Mm. Um, with, with Fat Cats, are you hoping to still play a gig in Stoke, in, in place of it? Yeah, we don't know where it's going to be yet, and we don't know if it's going to be the same date, um, but there's definitely going to be a big mm. a, a gig. What, what? we're possibly thinking is um, there, there's a couple of venues we're looking at or we're just going to take some time out and do a really, really big show um, when, we, when we've got a little bit more time. It's just that it's fallen on a bank holiday Sunday, so when we started phoning around venues, they were all kind of busy yeah. <laughs> with it being a huge bank holiday. Um, so yeah, we're just trying to find something. We're, we'll be sorting something out. There'll, there'll definitely be a show. So mm. um, uh, you, You've had a, a massive weekend for the, for the single this, this weekend. Yeah pushing out across the radios. Are you feeling the pressure of, of following up Sirens? 
Um, I am a bit. What about you, Rich? You don't tend to feel pressure not, on anything. Not, not so much so. with following up sirens, but just with, I think, because with sirens, we never really thought about it too mm, much, yeah, did we? Yeah, yeah. Um, we kind of picked a de- We'd recorded some demos in the December previous, and we decided that we wanted to release something because we had our first gig coming up, so we went back in and we re-recorded one of those, and it just kind of put it out there, didn't we? Yeah, as, as yeah. something to say, this is what we sound like, we've got a gig coming mm. up. And then that all kind of, only, like we said earlier, only kind of really recently blew up and yeah. people kind of picked up on it. So then when it came to recording this one, it wasn't so much the pressure of following that up as that we kind of wrote the tune and then we were heading into the studio and the week before we were like, well, I don't really know how we want it to sound and what are we going to do this yeah. and that. and. With the pressure was more on to make it sound good, wasn't yeah, it? Than, yeah, than I think what came of it. Yeah, I think for us it was it was always about sort of we always felt that I think because we, <clears throat> sirens, like Rich said, was kind of put out in a rush. It, it, we we never thought about it mm. too much. We just kind of threw it out there. Whereas, whereas this one, because we were thinking everything over and we were determined to make it, you know, the best it could be. Obviously, it was kind of suddenly you get this pressure in the studio where you're thinking. That, does that sound good enough? And I've <laughs> yeah, never do had we need that to before. Do this? Yeah, do, do, we, do, <laughs> do we need that? Yeah, do we need to make the introduction shorter? Is, it, is the outro too long? And yeah, it brought in a whole new new set of mm. ways of thinking. But it's exciting at the same time, I think, because um, what we came out with, we were really happy. Yeah, it paid off in the um, end. Yeah, it? and because we recorded UTC with Tom and Nay, then they know us so well. We sort of we went in with a certain idea of the track, and halfway through the day that we recorded, it was mm. completely different. But they kind of take it in a direction that got us excited about the track again, and, uh, and sort of like it really inspired us to to do the best we yeah, could on which it. Which kind of instantly settled any nerves, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think recording at UTC that massively helps. That I've I've been up there when bands have been recording, mm. um, and there's just such a nice atmosphere up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really good at looking after people. Well, that's it. Yeah, and make you feel comfortable, and because they know what they're doing, and you know that, and, mm-hmm. and, they, they, and they're happy to input ideas and stuff. So yeah, it kind of helps it you really settle like started into. Started there, really, didn't mm. it? It was. We did our first few rehearsals. Well, we rehearsed there for about six months, and so we were down there all the time. We recorded. I think we recorded our first demo there the day after the open. Yeah. So they could test all the gear out. So it kind of we almost became part of the furniture for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So it's, we, we, we actually look forward to going back. Yeah. To, just to chill out in the room and just spend some time with Tom and Nate. Um, yeah, and j- drink coffee and make up ridiculous puns. <laughs> but yeah, we, we managed to get some work done as well. So. Yeah, well, we've got the biscuit, as it were, a UTC yeah. thing. <laughs> um, but all, all the young still go there to, to like record the demos, yeah. as, as mm, you know, yeah. obviously. Mm. Is that something you'll still be doing, like, if you hit the, the levels, all, all the young are, or, or even higher? I'd, I'd certainly hope so, uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's always good to carry on working with somebody who, yeah. who knows you to that kind of depth. And yeah, they've so they've almost, we'll always yeah, they've almost become like the fifth and sixth members of the yeah. band, really, haven't they? So, yeah. yeah, I think we'll always end up back there, one way or another. We'll yeah. always <laughs> end up back with Tom and me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Camp Stag, thanks very much for coming down today, guys. Thank um, you. I cannot thanks wait to play this track. I'm going to let you guys introduce it yourselves. Over to me then. Okay, this is uh, our new single, which will be available on the 27th of May from iTunes and everywhere else. It's called Walking With Broken Bones. Classic hits and today's biggest tunes. Six Sounds Radio.